All right, welcome. Doozer here. Uh, got a little uh, job here. Um, this is a, uh, a boring and facing head from um, a Summit uh, horizontal boring mill. And uh, I bought this a while ago at an auction. I think I paid three or four hundred bucks. I don't remember. But uh, you can see I'm going to concentrate uh, on these, these gears here. I've got this thing taken apart. And what I'm trying to do is uh, uh, allow the adjustment of this head um, uh, just like a regular boring head like you'd have on a bridge port. Um, so this is the back of the head and these gears, what these do, these um, allow the uh, slide adjustment, the offset, this is the offset. And um, so let me kind of show you here. You see that? that is, that's a half nut folks, okay? That is truly um, half it's actually a quarter uh, of a nut but this this is a portion of an acme nut okay it almost looks like a worm profile what this does um, on the front side not on, not on the back but on, on the front side okay it, it meshes with the with that so that's interesting if you can see let me kind of zoom you in so normally power comes from a bevel. This is this is a bevel gear. This has got like a 10 degree bevel on it. And on this surface is a ring gear um, that has um, uh, radial teeth and also bevel teeth. It almost looks like a, a starter uh, gear for a, an engine flywheel. But this gear now is just a spur gear. Okay? Common, regular spur, spur gear, straight tooth. Now you notice over there, what this is, um, this is a, I guess it's like a worm, but it's not really, it's just like a, an Acme thread. Uh, it's an Acme thread worm, which, you know, as I said, meshes with the, uh, you can see right there, it meshes with the half nut. And that moves the, uh, the the offset slide for the boring head. That offsets your boring boring bar. It gives you the radius. So what they do here is, uh, you know, it, the way that the, the mill is set up, the 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 big ring gear w was adjustable uh, from the controls in the milling machine. Mine doesn't have that, so I'm not going to be using that ring gear. But originally it would turn this little bevel gear or crown gear, um, which is like, you can hardly see it, but it's about a 10 degree uh, inclined bevel. And that's all set up to turn this just spur gear. The spur gear communicates with another spur gear. And you say, well, that's not a spur gear. Well, it is. It's got spur gear teeth cut in uh, an Acme thread, I guess you'd call it a worm. And I thought to myself, well, gee, it's an, it's the gear teeth are interrupted with this, the, the helical spiral. As you can see, it's it's a helical spiral, just like a screw thread. It's essentially a big Acme screw thread. You'd say there's there's gear teeth cut in the, the threads, and that's kind of unusual. Well, it is. And it's reduced surface bearing area, but I, I, I can't see that it's worn any. Uh, either gear, uh, the, sp the spur gear or the, uh, the teeth cut in the, uh, the Acme screw gear or the worm gear. So that's kind of cool. But that's how that works. Um, and it meshes, like I said, with this, this half nut on the other side to move the uh, offset, the, uh, the boring head. So I said all that. And I also said I'm not using this. Uh, drive right there. I'm using this gear. Um, well, I, I shouldn't say that. I'm using the shaft that this is all on. So, so right here at the top, and let me go handheld. I'll show it to you. Right there. That is a uh, the shaft. Now, all right, here we go. So, 
if you spin that gear, you'll notice to the left side of your screen the shaft is spinning too, right? So on the right side of your screen you got the gear spinning which is tied to the shaft. And you can see what that is, is that's a hex head that's uh, for like an Allen wrench. So that there is a 3 8 hex and down in the center is a ball oiler. Okay? Now, let me zoom out a little bit. You can see there's another shaft over there with a ball oiler. And that shaft is the, uh, there you go. So on the top of your screen, you see the shaft with the worm wheel. On the bottom of your screen, you'll see the, uh, the shaft uh, that normally drives the whole affair. And like I say, uh, what I did is to be able to spin that, th there was no hex in here. There was no hex in there. I added this hex into the shaft. So what that had was uh, a threaded hole in the shaft to withdraw this whole bushing. Now you see this, this is a bushing, and let me kind of show you here, um, back again, what the deal is, okay. So this bushing on top, which I just showed you guys, um, it has a tapered pin in it. So this tapered pin uh, goes across the edge of this bushing. And, and what they do is they give you a thread. Thank God they give you a thread to withdraw it. So now I've had all this apart and I've reworked all this, but I'm kind of doing a retrospective video here. So you do is you pull it out and, and believe me, when this when I pull that out, th this thing I had to jack it out, right? Put a big wash around here and like a hollow tube spacer and usually you, I think you, I think if I remember I use the stud so you're not screwing in the actual uh, pull out threads you're not wasting those threads wearing on those threads using a stud and you're, you're jacking with a nut this is, so th this is a re-dramatization so that there if you can see I don't know if you can see is tapered Okay, that's a taper pin, all right? So that, that, that dude's a taper pin. And like I said, thank the Lord that they have a um, withdrawal threads. So I take that out, kind of show you guys what the deal is. So I'm going to take this apart just because I, I want to show you guys. So now there's a little play in these gears, okay? Not much. Um, the top of this, let me show you, too much. That moves just a little bit, okay? So now what I can do here is, uh, this is a magnet, okay? This is a dial indicator base with a magnet, okay? So I'm going to do it. I'm going to put that magnet base on there, okay? I'm going to put that on the top of that. And I'm going to turn the magnet on. And I'm going to lift that. Try to use the magnet. Jeez Louise, that's strong. You know what? I'm going to turn the magnet off and push it up. And then I'm going to turn the magnet on. No, that sucks it down. Push it up. The gear pushes up 30 thousandths, maybe, not even. Shoot, it sucks it down. All right, turn it on. Put it on, well, pick it, yes. All right, see now I've picked up the bushing, right? If I turn it, you can see that's where the pin used to go, right? So now I've extracted the, uh, let me turn the uh, magneto off, put the back up. So this, folks, that's, that's the bushing. So now I'll show you that. Okay, it's kind of cool, right? And so it goes 
from the front and from the front and bam that's how that's held in there guys it's a tapered pin and uh, that right there well let me pull it out that's what it is right and it won't fit the other way because it's tapered it might yeah you know, it, it doesn't fit but for this it locks in so that's how this bushing is held and retained okay now um can you see it's got a, it's got an oil groove in it see that oil groove and it just barely doesn't go to the top but there's an oil groove in that bushing so that's kind of cool that's kind of neat so that's that's how that goes right um so now if you if, if you want to see how this all comes so now there's the uh the shaft in there i can take and i'm pulling the shaft out okay and this stuff is going to hopefully not slide off all right so there's the shaft okay and uh you kind of so there's the shaft um you can see on top what i did is i press fit um the head of a half inch uh socket head uh allen screw okay and i think that's a one and a half or two thousandth press fit um i think i think it's one and a half and it's loctited and it's down to a shoulder right so I, I i bored it down to a shoulder so that's pressed in there it's loctited in there and it's in so much you know it swelled this bushing surface right with uh because of the hoop stress right so if you guys forgot you know that's how this all fits together right so that piece right there that's this this whole thing is the bushing and it gets side pinned in so this actually swelled a little bit and this got tight in here this is very tight fit i mean i, I bet you it's a half a thou because this was probably a one thou clearance and it swelled about a half a thou from the hoop stress you know of putting in that um the head of that allen screw now it says on there um y y e s or something or y e e you can see it that's the maker's mark of the bolt right and it happened to be impression stamped in there and i, I turned the bolt and it didn't clean up and i left it because i thought it looked cool now you see that ball oiler in there that's a quarter inch diameter press in ball oiler and the reason that that's in there is because um, you can see, you can see, so there is, uh, holes in there, right? Let me put this down. So the oil goes in the top and it's fed into, uh, into that hole, right? This hole, can you see? Has a piece of blue plastic in it and I blocked that hole off on purpose um, because it fed that uh, that bevel gear and I'm not using that bevel gear uh, it was actually a hole drilled all the way through the bevel gear th into the teeth into the, the low point of the tooth and if you notice I've done the same thing on my Colchester lathe I've, I've drilled into the hollow of a shaft um, and I to, to, to feed oil to tap oil from the center of a shaft to the, the bottom the valley of a tooth um, And in this application we're eliminating the use of that gear so we don't need it and of course the bottom hole is for a uh, a bronze bushing to get lubricated and it's actually um, Yeah, that, that's the hole for the top bushing I plug that hole for the gear and this is for the bottom bushing and 
it goes all the way through. Can you see? So um, at the bottom of the bushing, there was another reservoir in down in 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 the in, inside the uh, the, bo the boring head uh, for the bearing journals for something else. But uh, so that's what that is. Now there's two keys in there, right? They're held captive in. Uh, in the shaft, in key seats, right? Uh, a keyway is is kind of endless, open to the shaft. A key seat is closed, so the key can't fall out. So these are key seats, and there's keys in them. Now, the 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 small key here was in 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 a good tight fit um, for a gear. I didn't even I'm not even going to put power through anyways. But the spur gear goes on to this uh, key, right? And, and the spur gear was loose on this. I mean, this this thing had uh, maybe like two or three degrees of slop uh, in the rotation. So I made a new key. This was a um, four millimeter uh, key seat, and I used a uh, a five sixteenths. No, it was an eight millimeter key seat, and I used a five sixteenths uh, key. And I, I ground it to fit because that was, that was such a sloppy key seat. Uh, I was able to to fit that key, that five sixteenths American size key, in there by taking off. I think I took off a thou and a half or two thou, and it's all selectively selectively fit. And you see, I had to uh, use the belt sander and round the ends uh, for it to fit in there. Okay, so that's actually a light press fit. On that uh, five sixteenths, or uh, actually eight millimeter uh, key. So, and like I said, the small key is, is actually a good tight fit. I, I didn't measure it; it's probably six six millimeters, uh, but it fits nice and tight into a gear that we're not using anyway. So that's fine. So this was actually a, a, a it's a good fit, but it would fall out. So I super glued the little key in the key seat. The big key is a, uh, a very light f f push fit. Uh, and to, to grab these keys out, you, you, you grab them in your Kurt vise, and the Kurt vise is really uh, nice for grabbing uh, these keys and yanking them out if they're press fit. So that's cool. So that's that. Let me put that aside. Talked enough about that. So these gears, they just kind of sit in here, right? So uh, here's that gear. This uh, this has a key uh, broached into it, and that of course mates, you know, with this uh, spur gear cut in the Acme worm or whatever you want to call it. And and, and like I say, um, this bottom gear, and that that's got some some taper to it. It's like a bevel gear. I'm not really using this, right? I'm not. But you can see, let me show you again. Um, there it is. There's a hole in the valley of the teeth. And that was that lubrication hole, right? That was that lubrication hole that I plugged off. You see that blue piece of plastic in there? That was, so when I put this on, that 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 hole is no longer um, no longer supplying oil. That's why that's plugged off. Because I'm not using this gear. It's just kind of a spacer, but I'm going to leave it. So so that's cool. Set all that. So those two gears go in there, and there is a a, a spacer with a a keyway in it. It's almost like you'd find on a horizontal milling machine arbor. So, so that goes in there. That's just kind of part of what it is. So, uh, so let me take you handheld. What we got here is uh, this this shaft I left in, nice and smooth. Um, so that's the bushing. That that uh, the shaft I just got done showing you, it fits in. It's like an oil light bushing. 
Okay. And you can see there's a hole here. Okay. So no, there was two gears that went on this thing. Um, let me see here. Um, Alright, so these gears, there's two of them here. This is the gear I was talking about. So that would have gone on and made it, this gear would have gone on the, uh, the back of the boring head there under that, uh, journal and this would spin on the head so you can see the the spur gear teeth mated with the gear in the horizontal boring mill which would, would in turn this 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 whole gear would be the adjustment for the offset so you'd crank the adjustment for the offset on the horizontal boring mill on the controls it would spin this look like I said it looks like a starter gear um, spin that spur gear which would turn this bevel gear, which in turn this bevel gear would mate to the one I was just showing you. Now the one behind it with even bigger teeth, that was the drive gear. So apparently this thing spun on bearings, not on the spindle, right? Um, I guess this mill, it was a Summit mill. I think Summit is Polish or Czechoslovakian or something. Summit mills, uh, this is the drive for the whole boring head, okay? on its own set of bearings. It doesn't spin with the spindle of the horizontal boring mill. The milling spindle and the boring spindle cartridge are separate. So I'm just going to bolt this head to the spindle of the Giddings and Lewis. There's four bolts around there. I got a center stuck in there for safety. There's four bolts and two keys. I'm going to bolt that to the, uh, the outside spindle, which is keyed, not the extending spindle. So, like I said, that's how the Giddings and Lewis works. These two ring gears are how the Summit horizontal boring mill worked. And say so the coarse pitch one was the drive gear, the finer pitch with the bevel gear was the offset adjusting gear. And as I said, um, I'm not going to use that. But that kind of answers the question you guys may have, you know, what's this flange for? Well, that flange was uh, the driver for that bevel gear. And the, the gear with the, uh, the big tooth profile bolted to the, the uh, flange of that. So just so you know, that's what that was about. Um, one thing I wanted to point out was this. So, this is the bushing, right? Now, to make that fit, you gotta line that. You really don't have to line it up. It, uh... right? I don't want to drop it. To get it lined up perfect, there you go. But th this was not a slip fit. See how it, that's... There is less than a one thousandth clearance fit. Less than a thou, okay? It moves like butter. It really does. All right, but to get it to fit, I had to use the cylinder hone, right? So this is a three-fingered, three-stone hone that normally you'd use for, uh, you know, engines, uh, glaze breaker hone, sometimes people call it. But that uh, cylinder hone goes down to two inch, and that actual hole I was honing in the body uh, the cast iron body of the offset boring head there is 50 millimeters, so it was a tight fit. And I spent four hours turning this by hand, stroking it 
and spinning it to get that, yeah, four hours. Because I didn't want to get the bore bell mouthed or uh, out out of shape or out of out of alignment. So yeah, that's what I used. I could have um, turned a mandrel up, ground a mandrel for whatever that inside bore is, right? Uh, a mandrel is nothing more than a dummy shaft and ground the outside diameter of this uh, you know the half a thou I took off of it right I took like a half a thou um, probably out of the bore actually but I could have taken material off of this and left the bore alone like I said I have to make a, a dummy shaft up so I could go between centers and then I would have run it I would have run it on the uh, Brown and Sharp 13 between centers there. And maybe I should have done that. It probably would have been quicker. But what I did learn by doing it the hard way or the long way or the whatever the way you want to call it way is, is, is this. So if you look down in that bore let me kind of tilt you over, you can kind of see the intersecting. Um, my knees are in the way there, okay. So you can see where that, that taper pin comes in the side. But what I want you guys to really notice is the top and the bottom of that bore, okay? Now, The top and that bottom of that bore show where the hone was honing heavier. And the inside of that bore shows it's kind of gray, not much contact with them stones. And what that means is this. This is like an engineering machining lesson. I think the people that made this boring head were really intelligent and they relieved the inner part of the bore. That was my first theory. Because then it would have the, a little bit more freedom from seizing up and, and easier to push in. But then I got to thinking, for somebody to do that on purpose would, would be pretty thoughtful. And But you'd have to... Uh, what would you do? You, you can do that with a boring bar. You're going to selectively cut out the inner. I don't think that's what we're seeing here. I think that's what uh, I think what we are looking at is this cast iron. I, I want to say chuck, but it's not a chuck. It's, it's it's a boring head. This boring head, the iron has been hardened on the surface. It's been this whole thing has been heat treated. The ways the dovetails on it are quite hard. And when I say quite hard, I mean in the mid 40 C scale, 45 to 50 C. I, th I bet you they're 45 C. Let's say they're 45 C. I believe the surface of this uh, chuck was run through the furnace and quenched, uh, 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 you know, and the you know, to, to th the longer you heat something, the deeper the, the heat treatment goes. The more the uh, the carbon, you know, recrystallizes uh, into martensite or whatever. Um, but I believe th 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 those two bands where the hone was uh, really making that surface uh, shiny there was the, the, the hardened outer surface of the boring head and, and the bottom is of course exposed to the flames too. The inner surface uh, made that the lower ring. So I'm wondering, you know, th that's that's where it seemed to be the the shiniest where the, the stones were honing. But it fits now. Um, while I'm here, so what that is, that had an eighth inch pipe thread uh, grease zerk or lubrication zerk 
And those Zerk fittings, everybody wants to put grease in them. It was made for oil. So what I did is I put a plug in there. I had an eighth inch pipe thread hex plug. Um, and then I just, I, uh, I put it in the lathe and I, I, I drilled it and I reamed it for a quarter inch ball type lubrication fitting for an oil ball fitting. And I recessed it down 30 thousandths so the head sits kind of level. So that's kind of nice. So there's one there, there's one in my shaft for, for in here. Um, as I said, that's the bronze bushing. And the end of that shaft, which I showed you previous, um, the end hole was open. That was to flood the well that that's in. And that was uh, a lubrication hole to lubricate the bearing surface of that gear that used to go on here. Now, as I said, I'm not using that gear. I'm not using the gear that goes on this bearing journal. I'm not using the gear that bolts onto the face. So, um, you can see down in there, maybe you can, there's a, a space at the bottom of that bushing, of course, and that would be where the end of that shaft would lubricate this cross fitting. And uh, I want you to know, Take a picture there. Oh, there it is. You can see that little bitty hole that would be on the uh, the, 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 the the extreme on the right side of your screen. Or, I'm sorry, left side of your screen. It looks like an eighth inch hole, right there, and that's actually a uh, a, a five thirty seconds, uh, which is four millimeter. That's a four millimeter hole that connects up. It goes into that uh, well underneath the centered bronze bushing, that hole right there. And uh, that lubricated the inside of this flange, which lubricated that uh, the big drive ring gear. So that had to be plugged off. And it, the, the, the top one, just intersects it, so that's a cross hole. So what I did is right in the well there, I took a, I made out of a hard nylon, a four millimeter a little uh, dowel pin, I guess you'd call it, a little plastic nylon, hard nylon plug, and I pushed that all the way um, till it was, you know, blocking off that port from the inside where that bushing well is. And like I said, this thing, I didn't pull this apart because everything was hunky-dory. I did change the lubrication fitting um, at the end of that shaft, converted it from eighth inch pipe thread, uh, uh, screw and grease nipple, or uh, lubrication fitting to that, uh, you know, surface mount ball oiler. So that's cool. Um, let me put you back here. All right. Alright, so what we do first guys, I'm going to take that uh, spacer and put that there and then it goes on the bottom gear and uh, I'm going to make sure I line the keyway up with the where I got to put it there, so the two keys, uh, keyways are lined up, and they appear to be very closely lined up. And then I'm gonna put the main spur gear on there, and you can see the keyway. Now I'm gonna put that on. With the key lined up and the gear is going to be in mesh with the side gear. Come on, kind of coaxial, concentric. I mean, it's kind of lined up. All right, now I'm going to take this shaft and, like I said, in the uh, in the end of that hex head Allen 
bolt, screw. I got a, a, a ball type lubrication fitting too. So I'm going to put that in, noting the keys are forward because that's kind of how I get everything put together. And everything, as you can see how it goes together, right? I'm kind of wiggling it, wiggle, wiggle. Alright, now the whole thing, right, the whole thing just went in. And I, the, the fits on these, the fits are very tight. They're like a one less, a thousandth or less slip fit. A one thousandth or less slip fit. And to get everything to slide in like that, took a few hours of fitting, okay, with the uh, stones and files and ink scraping, grinding, chamfering, deburring, to get all this to fit. Glory be. Alright. So, again, this is our bushing. Right? And it's got the uh, that lubrication slot in there, you can see. So this is going to line up And it's in there. And, and now it's flush, okay? So, we're going to take our loop, our pin with the hole in it. And just so we got a handle, we want to make sure that it's nice and uh, seated. We're going to clean it. Let me give it a quick... Or had to cycle. I'm going to stick that pin um, in the hole. There it goes. I'm going to wiggle it. I'm going to spin it, wiggle it, try to turn it. And that's it. So now this is good and flush at the top. Look at that. I can spin everything. Zoom in, why not? You guys love it. You gotta love seeing that stuff, man. Alright, perfect. So if you're gonna put a you're gonna able to put an Allen wrench in the top here, you know it's gonna turn this shaft. Like I said we never had the ability. We never had the ability to adjust that there. There there was no hex there. I added that hex primarily to be able to adjust the offset of the boring head manually because we're no longer going to have it on. I mean, you know, we, we, this was on a summit mill. We're never going to be able to use this gear and ring and everything for adjusting the offset. So I couldn't, there's no way to adjust it until I put that hex in there. So that was the reason for taking all this apart and to see if everything was hunky dory and, and good. Um, Right, so now I can adjust the offset, and as I said before, that drives this, uh, you know, uh, half nut, which is connected to the, the dovetail slide for the boring um, bar itself. So, that's what I've been doing. I spent about three and a half hours uh, honing and lapping this insert bushing thingy thing. Um, I did the inserts and in, in, uh, the, the hex thing a while ago. Put this, the uh, ball oiler in, in these two. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I just wanted to stress to get all this to fit you know drop in with that shaft and how everything fits so nice and smooth here on camera I mean, I probably played with this for four hours, just getting everything to fit. I mean, I made a new key. There was a key for the keyway, and it was so loose. Like I said, I, I mentioned that, I know. 
but I didn't mention how bad the old one was, and that the, the reason I made the, the the new key was the bad. The old key was just sloppily made in the first place. It wasn't worn. It, it looked like it was done with a chisel. My goodness. Anyhow, so uh, so this is the beginning, and uh, like I said, I showed you in another video. I soldered the sc the scar, the score that was in the offset head. Um, but I just wanted to kind of catch you guys up on a little bit what I've been working on with this uh, Summit uh, boring head. Like I said, I think Summit was Polish or Czech made. And uh, so I need a piece of steel in here to make an adapter. Um, I think seven inches is what I need and an inch and a half thick, an inch and a half to get me beyond this surface. But it's going to bolt to these four bolts and I think there's two dowel pins. Yep. So I got a nine inch piece of steel. I might turn it out of the nine inch or the seven inch round drops on eBay that I might buy a piece. I can get it for like 40 some bucks, maybe 50 bucks shipping. I don't know. But that's going to uh, allow me to put this on the Giddings and Lewis, the mighty Giddings and Lewis. Um, yeah. So there you go. Right here. Oh, one more thing. You might think this is kind of cool. Bear with me. So, um, as I said, that pin is tapered. What I did is I drilled a hole on that side. See this? The, sm the smaller hole, uh, um, more towards the top of your screen, um, that hole, that's, that's the hole I drilled all the way through and I tapped it for quarter twenty as a jack out hole. So you put a, uh, a, a quarter twenty screw in there and you j use it to jack out that taper pin. Uh, I believe they're called jack out holes in the, uh, the mold industry. Even though I can pull this taper pin out, I added a jack out hole, you know, just because. Um, so this is where the, uh, that's where the half nut goes, right? So the half nut goes there, and that spins, and it moves the half nut up and down, and the whole dovetail slide uh, gets put in here. You can see the dovetail, is the, the slide is not in here, the, the facing slide, but that's how this works um, with the half nut. So just wanted to show you guys that. Okay, that's cool. Enough of that. Um, I'm all fixed up now. I can adjust it with a 3 8 Allen wrench. I can lubricate it uh, with a pumper oiler, uh, a, a pump oiler. And I can lubricate that one with a pump oiler uh, and, and, and get all the bushings and the gears lubricated. So, all right, that's the, uh, the Summit boring head and a little bit of the progress that I've made on it.